hello to Emily Egan. How are you? Good. Hello. So nice to finally meet you. <laughs> and it looks like it's nice. To, I'm watching the stream just to make sure it's working over here. It's lovely to meet you too. So Emily, tell tell our audience and tell the people watching. And by the way, if you're watching live and you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the comments and I'll be able to see and I'll be able to pass them on to Emily. Um, but Emily, tell us a bit about your pageant background. I guess let's start with the easy stuff. Yeah, awesome. So I'm competing in Miss Galaxy Australia this year, 2019. But my journey started about two years ago when I first competed in Miss World Australia. And then, of course, as most girls find with pageants, you're hooked and you can't just do one. So I went back the next year for another go at Miss World. And then this year, I've decided to enter Miss Galaxy as well. So yeah, nice little start to pageantry. That, that's interesting. I've had a I've had a couple of friends, well, one one friend that I remember who did start with, I think it might have been World or Universe, and then went on to, I guess for want of a better description, the more niche pageants, right? So like Galaxy, like Grand. But I know more people who've gone the other way, who started maybe at the smaller side and then sort of built up their confidence and then gone to the bigger ones. So is there any particular reason why you've gone from, I guess, the, the biggest stage in pageantry to, let's say, a slightly smaller one? Yeah, absolutely. So when I first started Miss World, it was actually because the modeling agency that I am currently with um, got sent an email just basically saying, would anyone be interested? We're looking at applications. And so I went into the sort of pageant world completely blind, just basically doing it for the idea of networking. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll go down to Sydney because I'm ACT based. So I thought, oh, I'll go to Sydney and yeah, do some networking, do some walks and not really understanding at all what pageantry was was more just having the day to meet new people and then realizing actually the scope of what Miss World was. Like I had definitely seen it and I definitely heard of it, but I didn't know, yeah, all the things that came with it, all the wonderful um, areas that they covered as well. So definitely the first year was me walking in completely blind with no idea. And then the second year obviously went back because I loved it and I wanted the whole experience, not just the one day of competing in the state final. I wanted right. to do the charity work and yet have the whole experience of appearances and whatnot. And then this year going to Galaxy, um, it was actually just a recommendation through a couple of different girls and I really liked what Galaxy stood for. Mm -hmm. And for me, being from ACT, I just wanted the opportunity to I don't know, step out of my comfort zone and try something different. And so rather than going back to Miss World again, I guess I just wanted to, yeah, try something different. And I really liked the values that Galaxy had. And, um, yeah, I guess going from big to small, yeah, I guess another way to work up my confidence and see where I could go. But I just, to be honest, just fell in love with Galaxy. It wasn't necessarily for me about going big to small. It was just I found a pageant that I aligned with. And um, you're from the ACT. Yes. That in itself is unusual. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> do I know actually any Canberran? I don't, I don't. You might actually be the first <laughs> from ACT. So does it does it play into? Is that a factor at all? Sort of being the only person from your state, or is it? Are you kind of used to it by now? Well, I've actually found out that there is another girl in my division who's going to be competing this year, which I was so excited about because I've got someone who can share my passion. And then also one girl who's going to be entering the teen section. But certainly last year for Miss World, it did play a big role for me just because I'm all about promoting my local community, especially. And coming from Canberra, I feel like I have a lot of backing and a lot of support. So, you know, I go down there and the girls will say, oh, I'm from Penrith or I'm from here. And then I'm just in the corner and I'm like, oh, ACT. <laughs> you may, I know I've been to Galaxy, I think two times now, and you'll find that the New South Wales contingent is actually not that big. It's all from WA. Yeah, it's all yeah. From Queensland. It's all Perth, Perthians and Gold Coastians. <laughs> but I'm sure you will do your, do your state proud. Tell me what, what area are you most looking forward to? So obviously you've had, you've been through Miss World twice. You're going into Galaxy for the first time this year. I mean, there, there'll be some differences to be sure, but there will be, you know, a lot of sections uh, in common. What section do you most look forward to in pageants? 
Um, I think this year I'm most looking forward to the fun fashion or like the fashion wear section and that's something that Miss World didn't have and that's why I'm most looking forward to it just to sort of do something different and wear the amazing dress that you can have a lot of fun in. It's not a serious walk. It's not um, – I love evening gown as well but it's not where I'm down for it's fun section where you get to show your personality and I think for me I'm one of those people that my personality is I think what really shines about me and so I'm hoping in that walk is yeah it's a place when I'm really going to shine so I have an amazing outfit as well so when you have a really good outfit you're excited to wear I think it makes a difference. (laughs) Fair enough I mean you mentioned your personality so how do you find interview because most girls um, who want to show their personality they say the interview is a favorite part so how do you feel about the interview section? I'm a little bit nervous. With Miss World, I didn't make the national final. So in the state section and the preliminary section and the castings and whatnot, I didn't actually have to sit down and do a formal interview. So obviously I've done plenty for jobs and whatnot, but I haven't done a formal pageant setting interview. So I'm super excited because I love talking and I think I've got some fun things to share with the judges, but um, it'll be interesting to see yeah, how I perform in a pageant setting. Yeah. It, yeah, I guess pageant Q&A for the first time. Yeah, you, you don't really know what it's like until you've been through it. Uh, but tell me, you so you've been through, as we mentioned, Miss World twice. What mm-hmm. um, what has hooked you into pageantry? Because everyone has their own reason. And I don't I actually put a, po- a poll up on my Instagram story as to anyone who's competed once and then quit. And there's hardly anyone who's only done once. Yeah. (laughs) So what is it about pageants that got you in particular hooked? Yeah, I think the first pageant I did with Miss World, as I said, I went in on the day, competed on the day and pretty much just walked away and thought, oh, that was so much fun. I met a lot of the girls and yeah, made some friends obviously just for one day but it was seeing the journey of the women after that like I followed a lot of the girls on social media and saw all the wonderful charity work they did saw how much of a difference they made in their community and it was just seeing that growth and development and so going back the second year my focus wasn't on um wasn't on going and competing on the day. It was just about really throwing myself into the whole experience. And so my second year of pageantry last year, was just a whole nother world. Like I fell in love with it, working with my community, making new friends, you know, being a really positive voice and just having that platform for causes, which I'm super passionate about. And I feel like if you can throw yourself entirely into pageantry and not leave anything on the table, your experience will be a hundred times better than, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's only so much you can do in one day, isn't there? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you're competing for a few days, you build much more of a sense of family. But let's let's get into the interesting part for me, and I think the interesting part for everyone, which is why you're doing this. Uh, watch your Instagram yeah. story. I know you just put up some Instagram stories about body positivity, and mm-hmm. I get the feeling that there's more than one cause you're passionate about. I yeah. also <laughs> tends to be if someone's passionate about a cause it's because it's touched them in some particular way it's not like we just pick causes that we're passionate about out of a hat so i guess give us a bit of your background going into pageantry and sort of the purpose for you Mm -hmm. so this year i'm really trying to focus on the overarching theme which is of course um female empowerment And so that covers a lot of things. As you said, I've touched on um, body issues, body shaming, but other ones for me are women in leadership and being an ambassador for gender equality as well. Um, Leading into pageantry, I guess I'll be honest and say growing up in high school, I was um, overweight for my age and then I got quite sick and so I was underweight for my age. And so I have definitely heard in the spectrum of body shaming you're too fat and I've heard you're too skinny. So I feel like I identify quite well with the body shaming issues and I'm trying to be a really positive role model for women there, just saying you are not alone. This happens to so many people and it's nothing nothing to be ashamed of and let it get to you, but I'm also trying to say to people just don't post something. That's my message, whether it's in real life or whether it's on social media, try not to post negative comments, try not to be a bully. It's just not your place to comment. And then obviously for gender equality, I'm actually my university's ambassador for International Women's Day. So I've been quite a strong presence for that my whole life. 
and going into pageantry, it's just the perfect platform to be able to chat about those causes and be among women who are all thinking the same thing of let's empower one another, let's use the platform in the right way. So I'm just lucky that pageantry sort of fell into my life and I'm now doing everything I can to use it as best I can. We, we need to circle back to International Women's Day because that fascinates me. I'll just yeah. bring you up to date. So um, Mar Mariella Royas Delgado. I don't yes, know yeah. She has written Go Emily with two exclamation oh. And Amelia Gunning. I don't know if you know Amelia, but she has yes. asked, what has been your favourite pageant experience so far? So, I mean, you, I guess you've had two Miss Worlds. So I guess out of the two Miss World years, which one has been your favourite? Yeah, so Amelia is actually the beautiful, she's a very close friend of mine, but she's also um, my seamstress, so she designs and organises, curates all my dresses as well. So I owe my whole life to her wow. at the moment, You've basically. Got a whole production going on. You've I got do, a seamstress. Yes. I'm impressed. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, my favourite pageant experience, wow, definitely the second year of Miss World. And I think the thing I enjoyed about it most was becoming a real sort of face in my community. Like I felt like Canberra just backed me wholeheartedly and um, doing the charity work, doing the appearances, just feeling like I had such a purpose and such a goal was honestly like I'm going to use the word life-changing because it really was. It was it was something to work towards and it was just such an enjoyable experience and that's obviously why I've come back is because I'm ready to take another step into a different direction. But, um, yeah, the, the whole thing. Mill, if you're listening, the whole year. <laughs> I hope she's listening because she asked the question. So you'd hope <laughs> yes, that if she asked the question, she stayed on. So, Amelia, if, if, if you are listening, please give, um, I don't know, show some love or something somehow. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to circle back to International Women's Day. So did you say, you, uh, so are you the current ambassador still or was that in previous years? Um, currently, so um, they selected, I think, about maybe 10 girls last year and I was one of the people who was selected as an ambassador, so they picked girls of all different ages and whatnot. And so it was from last year to this year and um, I spent the year kind of doing the best I can to talk about different causes um, it, relating to female empowerment and um, women's issues and I was lucky enough to meet um, Virginia Hausiger and Dame Quentin Bryce, the former Governor-General, and to just hear about their experiences as well and that was unbelievable like the amount I have learned from them and the amount I've tried to educate myself as well for other people so going forward yeah my focus is definitely on women's issues and um, for those in the audience International Women's Day I believe is Friday the 8th of March so yeah. it's coming up very very soon the reason I know Emily is because <laughs> I'm planning to release my book my next book, not not this, not this book, but my next book, which is very much about women's empowerment, planning to release it on International Women's Day. Fantastic. So let me ask you this. Why why is that cause so close to your heart? Um, and I'll, I'll give you a bit of context because I know a lot of people when they go into pageantry, uh, they feel the obligation to talk about women's empowerment. And sometimes they're, they're not, let's say, completely sincere about it. I can tell that you are sincere about it. But as I've said, people who generally are passionate about a cause, they have a reason to be super passionate about a cause. So why is gender equality and women's empowerment such a huge deal for you? Yeah, I actually have two sort of main reasons that spring to mind. The first one is obviously growing up as a woman, you experience different things. And one for me is I feel like growing up, I didn't have enough female role models to look at, especially in politics and in um in government, I'm currently studying communications, which is a lot, which is a made up partly of journalism. And so I'm really, growing up, I was very interested in that. And I was always feeling like I didn't have enough women to look at. Yeah. And so one of the reasons I'm advocating so hard now is to have women in those leadership positions in government, in CEOs. And I'm very lucky to have an auntie who is currently um, overseas working in Vietnam as the Consular General and she's always been an amazing role model to me and I've been lucky to have her but I just think other women who didn't have that growing up would struggle and not push for those sorts of roles so mm -hmm. that's a big reason and the other one is actually related to men's mental health as well. I find it very difficult when I have when I see friends or family or yeah it's generally for me it was male friends growing up who 
um, when they were going through something tough, they felt like they couldn't speak about it. And that really broke my heart. And I saw a lot of men who were in my um, circle who I believe that if they had the same opportunity to speak um, and feel vulnerable as women did, that I think a lot of um, rates of suicide for them would decrease and would just be, yeah, I'm just advocating for gender equality as much as I'm advocating for female issues, if that makes sense. Like I just think men deserve the opportunity to feel vulnerable, which would in turn hopefully help them to not turn to violence. Got it. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think the two issues are actually one and the same. I think um, yeah. take, take the, the F word feminism. And to me, I know a lot of people don't like that word, but to me, gender mm-hmm. equality, I mean, feminism is gender equality. It's not promoting yeah. that women are better than men. But for me, it's promoting that the genders are equal, but that they're not necessarily the same. Um, I think yes. if we try and make them the same, we're in trouble. But gender equality is certainly the go. Uh, and as you mentioned, suicide, I'm sure, as you know, is a huge problem in our country. Um, it's actually yeah. the number one killer of anyone under the age of 44 above anything else like road accidents. So, Emily, give us a bit of background as to what you do outside of changing the world, <laughs> outside of pageantry, and if you have any free time, what, what do you do to unwind hobbies wise or anything else like that? Yeah. So I actually train in martial arts. So that takes up a lot of my time. I love karate and boxing and all things on that scale. Um, but other than that, uni at the moment is taking up majority of my time. So I love, yeah, I love my degree. So I'm studying communications and that's basically law, journalism and cultural studies, which I've been very lucky to love my uni degree. I'm also modeling. So that is um, obviously not as much of a priority when uni's on, but I try and get as much modeling work as I can. And then I also work at a tea store. So I love, I'm tea obsessed. <laughs> Were you the one who said you were going to help me with going from coffee to tea? Yes, that was me. I can do it. I will convert. <laughs> All right. So so just, just to make things a little less serious at the moment, I have always contended as a ad, coffee addict <laughs> that tea smells really good like in a T2 <laughs> store, but then you ever take the bloody stuff home and you make it and it just tastes like it just tastes like all tea. So what what's the secret to finding a good tea? Given that I'm coming from a history of coffee, strong coffee, not not no milk, no sugar, what's a nice strong tea that I can get my taste buds into? <laughs> okay, so I would say for tips, definitely go into a store of some kind and help them guide you. And for tea, there's actually different temperatures. So probably if you're drinking something, for example, a green tea and it's tasting really bitter, it's because you're making it at a temperature that's too hot. You'll need to add cold water, for example. So make sure you get instructions off the people of how to brew it correctly because I'm such a culprit of that. I still buy something in store and go home and it doesn't taste the same. And I have to email the store and say, how did you make it? Um, But yeah, in terms of teas, um, I know we spoke about it, but you are transitioning to matcha. And that's that what is, I was told to do. And then the first yes. day I had it, I was up until two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a very clever thing to do though, because matcha has a product in it called L-theanine, which essentially instead of coffee where you get the massive up and down, um, that sort of feeling with matcha, you'll get a much more, yeah, a much more steady, um, yeah, thought process. So in exam time, we actually sell out of March up because we get all the students coming in looking for it. But in terms for you, I would probably be looking at a strong black tea of some kind. Um, go into store and taste all your different preferences, but definitely a strong black tea. Okay. And then you can have matcha if you want matcha. We have different flavors in my store. So if you don't like the taste, we've got flavors. Okay. So just a, just a three-hour drive to Canberra to see you and i'll be sorted on my tea yes yeah. i'll send you a free shipping code <laughs> that m- might actually be worth it I, I just every time i go into the t2 <laughs> store i get overwhelmed it's like there's too many choices just tell me yeah. which one to buy uh, yeah. <laughs> i want to take you back to the boxing and the karate yeah. which you casually mentioned i was in- insta stalking you today and i yeah. saw at some point you got your brown belt you actually got it in the same school the same i don't know the, the G- Go Go Ken Ryu, which is what I actually studied probably 20 years ago, a while back. I certainly didn't get to brown belt. Um, I've done a few different ones. But 
why why martial arts? I'm, I'm, there are a lot of reasons, but I want to hear it from you. So why and, and two of them, very different ones, karate yeah. and boxing. So why? Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but karate came and just sort of fell in my life in the way that pageantry did of my best friend and I at the time we were at school probably 12 years old and we just saw a flyer for a free self-defense class and we were the two girls that were not doing any sort of sport at the time we weren't interested in netball or soccer or tennis so we thought oh let's go do this free self-defense class not realizing that it was actually karate Mm. and then we did the two free week trial or whatever and then we just ended up staying on as a fun thing for her and I to do but then I just yeah fell in love with I don't know martial arts the whole idea of discipline and for me it was fitness for a very long time I just liked turning up because it was keeping me fit and on a Monday night I wasn't doing much else so it was the perfect sort of thing for me and then the more I got up the belts the more I was realizing how much of an impact it was making in my life in terms of other things as well relieving stress and all of that. And so I started picking up more classes and yeah, I'm happy to say that I did get my brown belt last year and I'm hoping to um, keep going until I get my black. How, how, what, what's the timeline for getting the black? Oh, I reckon we'd be looking at at least another two years. There's still a lot I've got to learn before then, but I'm working hard each week. So that's the important thing. <laughs> right. And how much boxing have you done just to change the subject? Um, it's more for me, boxing is more of a trainer. I definitely don't compete at this stage. That is something I would look at possibly doing in the future. But, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a thing for me that that at the moment it's still fitness and I'm still working a lot on technique and whatnot. So I think competing would be further down the track for me, but it's at least three times a week. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boxing and modeling may not be the two best (laughs) careers. Yeah. Not that you can't do both, but if you get, you know, blo- a broken nose and you have a modeling shoot the yeah. next day, it, it may not go so well. A bit risky. Uh, now, Emily, before before I ask you for your contact details, um, I will show the audience. We're going to try and get fancy here and we just implode. Oh, well. So I'm going to show the audience um, your fundraiser. If this oh, fantastic. works, Which is over here. Now, um, so I know you can't see it but they can see it. <laughs> so it's on your Facebook, um, it's a Facebook link and it's for Make a Wish Australia. And you can see here 315, well, you can't, but people watching it, <laughs> $315 raised of $400. Um, and that's only in five days, gee. Yeah. Um, so if you want to help uh, Emily raise funds for Make a Wish, you can go to her personal page. I'll see if I can take them back because you've made that a public so you don't actually need to friend emily to be able to see the fundraiser which is right there uh emily any reason that you picked make a wish or have i forgotten and that's the official um fund the official sort of charity for galaxy i can't remember yeah galaxy does partner with make a wish but it definitely is a personal cause for me as well i had um one of my closest friends her family actually um received a wish for one of her siblings so i am so so grateful and excited to be partnering with make a wish it was as soon as i found out that was their charity i left for joy because that is who i'd be raising funds for anyway so it worked really well in my favor (laughs) can you tell us the wish that was granted for your friend yeah, so they actually went on a overseas trip to Italy, which was amazing, and they spent time over there as a family. That is amazing. So before we get to your contact details and then the final 10 questions, I guess I should ask you, do you have any particular goals going into Galaxy? Do you have any result that you're after or not? I think for me it's more about self self growth. Um, I've put a lot of my heart and soul into it and my whole thing going into this pageant was I'm going to pour myself in completely and wholeheartedly and whatever the result is meant to be, obviously you come to win. So I'm not, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't love the title. But um, if it's not written in the stars, I mean, I, this is my first national final. So for me, a top five, a top ten would be out of this world. So I'm just excited to go to the Gold Coast and represent Canberra, which is a massive thing for me. I'm just so grateful to be from such a beautiful community and I I take a lot of pride in being a Canberra representative. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, yeah, I'm not really sure. (laughs) I think a top 10 or a top 6 would be unbelievable, but 
yeah, it's the self growth for me that is the most important thing. Sure. And what about just for your own personal journey? Where where would you see yourself, let's say, in a year's time, two years time, five years time, God forbid, ten years time? Do you have any yeah. concrete plans for your future? Well, I'm finishing my uni degree hopefully at the end of this year. And so after that, it's definitely about finding a job that I love. I'm not sure what that's going to be in yet, but I definitely want to be in a people person role and definitely be in something in leadership or in where I'm speaking to other people and making a difference. And I'm obsessed with travel. So definitely the next two years, i travel based. I'm hoping to head to Japan with some of my closest friends. So that's on the bucket list for me right now. Sounds good. I'm sure they've got plenty of good good tea as well yeah that's it <laughs> okay so emily for people to follow your journey and um, what are the best social details and the contact details and whatever you say uh, in the edit at least I'll, I'll subtitle it below yeah awesome so best contact details to follow my journey is my instagram my handle is emily egan insta and that has shown my complete pageant journey from start to finish i have a highlight called galaxy where you can keep up with everything um, in terms of Facebook, you can follow me on there as well. I post things about my fundraiser, but Instagram is my primary contact. So definitely um, follow me on that one and I will follow you guys back as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, Emily, have you seen any of my previous interviews? Yes. Have you seen the final 10 questions? Yes. Okay. So you know what your answers are? Uh, I, I didn't prepare because I thought, <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd try not too hard. but <laughs> Fair. At least you actually know what the final 10 questions are. It's amazing how yeah. many people have watched my interviews and they seem to, it's an opportunity to cheat. But this is, this is kind of good preparation. We talked about pageant interview. This is more like a pageant interview. It's more question and yeah. answer. All right, so here we go. Good luck. Number one, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is molasses. <laughs> Any particular reason? No, it just sounds cool. My friend brought it up. <laughs> okay, I, I will say I've been to a factory, I can't remember where, and the smell of molasses to this day still haunts yep. me. Yeah, I know. Very <laughs> sickly, sweet smell. So, mm, okay. Number two, what is your least favourite word? Um, a swear word that I won't say. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, question three. In life, what gets you excited or what turns you on? Sports. And what turns you off? Um, unkindness or rudeness. Question five, what sound or noise do you love? I love the sound of rain at night when you're trying to go to sleep and your rains, like it's just lightly um, raining. Yeah, that's super peaceful. I get that. <laughs> and question six, what sound or noise do you hate? The car, when I come in in the afternoon, I always park my car and we have a dirt gravel driveway and the car goes to park on the driveway and it hits the rocks and it just makes a terrible noise. And yeah. <laughs> you, you mean it, the gravel bouncing up or someone? Yeah, the gravel bouncing up on your car. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant someone like hits a wall every time they park the car. Oh. Like, no, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. No. <laughs> okay. Question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick? and why i would fly i think it would just give you access to go anywhere see things um see life from a bird's eye view which would just be awesome and yeah i think it would be a good escape as well after a long day you could just fly away for a little bit <laughs> sounds good to me could go to japan question yeah. <laughs> eight what job or occupation other than your own would you most like to attempt i'd love to say modeling and i'm talking different modeling from mine as in real serious um full victoria's secret modeling but i'd also love to be a marine biologist no idea why just as a kid that was my um yeah working with animals marine biology is a funny one so many people say they want to be a marine biologist and i don't i've yeah. never quite <laughs> understood why um, and then a lot of the girls I've interviewed who want to model have actually said they want to be a Victoria's Secret model as well. <laughs> I, I'm not actually sure which one would be harder to pull off, but yeah, <laughs> those are two very two good answers and two very different answers. What about question nine? What's a job or occupation that you definitely would not like to attempt? Ooh, I think working overseas in the terms of like being away from my family is what 
I think of most. I'm not necessarily sure. I'm not picking a specific occupation. I'm more picking on location, but yeah, working somewhere really far away from my family. So your family and your support network, which you've mentioned on more than one occasion, obviously must be really important to you. Yes. Final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? I've been waiting for you. That, that's a that's a good answer. Hopefully he hasn't sort of been, you know, looking at his watch going, where is Emily? <laughs> <laughs> well, Emily, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you for having me. I'm so just grateful to um, chat and it's so nice. I've, I said to um, Adrian before, for all of you listening, that I've seen so much of this stuff that when I first came on to chat, I said, I feel like I know you when <laughs> I don't know you. So it's exciting to yeah put words to a face and get a first proper chat. <laughs> Well, well, I hope I've made a good impression. People, yeah, I people, have, have, people have told me that what I say actually matters, which to me is always a little bit of, um, that's a bit of a surprise. But I mean, I think you're for the pageant project, you're interview number 25. I don't know Obviously. if that's a lucky number or not. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> that's a good number. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's um, great meeting you and keep up with everything you're doing. Um, And I love the fact that you are ambassador for International Women's Day. That's fantastic. And I may see you up on the sunny Gold Coast. When actually is Galaxy this year? So the national final will be from the, I believe, the 30th of April to about the 4th of May. I think the crowning will be that Friday, so about the 2nd of May. So So you're two months away. Yeah. Countdown is on. (laughs) How are you feeling? Excited or nervous? Really excited, yeah. Yeah, I've got a little countdown on my whiteboard, so I get up every day and I rub it out and cross out the next day. (laughs) Uh, And again, just just briefly before I let you go, tell us about the photos behind you. We can't really make any out, but there must be about a hundred photos there. So what what what's the general story behind the photos? Um, just life. Every couple of months, it's my refresher that I print out a whole new set and get a whole new setup of just what I've done. And for me, it's just such a refresher that life always is, I'm moving forward in life. And so I try to not keep the photos up there for too long, but it's just my nice sort of Sunday afternoon exercise of refreshing my life and probably procrastinating uni a little bit as well. (laughs) (laughs) Glad to know that you're not perfect, that there's some procrastination in there. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, best of luck at Galaxy. I may see you up there if I make it up. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. And um, I'm going to thank everyone for watching. And Emily, just remember not to hang up on me. Yes, I won't. (laughs) Whether you're watching live or on the replay, we'll speak to you next time. Awesome. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Hey, it's Adrian. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with our interviews, then make sure to subscribe by clicking here. If you'd like to watch some of our interviews right now, then click here and also make sure to follow us on all our socials right here. Speak to you next time.